All right, so this is the post lab for the equilibrium constant determination, sort of help you, especially if you haven't had much of the equilibrium lab yet um, in lecture, uh, there may be some confusion. So hopefully this uh, walkthrough of some of the data uh, will help you uh, get that. So right now, what you should have are you should have a, um, a set of readings for the standards, maybe four standards or three standards in a water where you have the absorbances of those um, and you know the concentrations. And then you should also have then the uh, tubes that you mixed of the 0.002 molar iron nitrate and the 0.002 molar potassium thiocyanate and those absorbance readings. Okay, so, um, so we should be able to go from there. Now the first thing we need to do is generate a standard curve. Okay, so you'll need to take your absorbance data. So this is some example data that I generated. Okay, and so you'll note the concentration will be listed on the bottles. Um, you'll be able, or somehow, you'll be able to know what that concentration is. So you plot that on the x-axis. You'll plot the absorbance value on the y-axis, and you'll fit it to a linear curve. Okay, so you should get a, a formula. Okay, so you'll need to use this formula then when we start working up our data. I guess you don't really need the R squared. This is hopefully your line will look a little better than mine. Mine doesn't look that hot, but. I made mine kind of quickly. Okay, so this is the first thing. So this will be something you have to show, so you might as well go ahead and make it look nice uh, in terms of uh, fulfilling all the chemistry uh, requirements for graph making. All right, so <clears throat> the other then is you should have now the ones that were not standard, so you have your other data. So you have the milliliters of iron uh, solution that you added the milliliters of thiocyanate, and then the milliliters of water that you added, okay? So now to calculate then the concentration, okay, we know that the, uh, so if we have 2.002 uh, molar moles per liter, okay, of the iron stock, okay, so we did that, okay, and we have um, um, 5 milliliters, Okay, and then our final concentration, so that'll tell us how many moles we added. And then our final concentration, then our final volume is 10 milliliters. Okay, so 0.01 liters. Okay, that should allow us to calculate then what our final concentration is. In this case, it would be divided by half, or 0.001 molar of iron nitrate. So this is what we, and that would mean iron 3 plus. Okay, so that would give us our volume, um, our formula, our, our initial, so this is the initial, okay, so when we first mix them together, this is how much we added, okay, so you're going to need to calculate that, and you'll need to do the same thing for thiocyanate, now thiocyanate's got a bunch of different volumes, so that's the number that's going to vary, okay, so as you can see here, this is just my data, you can see all these initial ion concentrations are the same, but the, the thiocyanate concentration is altered, and then finally you have the absorbance then, okay, so I'm just going to do it for one, this first row, and calculate the KEQ based on what we have here. Okay, so the key values to take across are this, this, and this. Okay, so we know we have Fe3 plus plus SCN goes in reversible fashion to FEN SCN2 plus. Okay, we know our initial concentration of this is going to be 0 0.001 molar. This is point in our case, 0 0.0002, and then this is zero, okay? And so, <clears throat> then there's going to be some sort of change. Okay, so in this case, we're going to add, because if, if you've had this, this is what we call the ice table. So initial change and then um, uh, equilibrium. So this is gonna change by some amount, okay? It's gonna be X. Okay? And, and then we're gonna figure out what X is here, but. Um, and then, so the question is then what happens to here? Well, if this goes up by X, it's got one mole of iron and one mole of thiocyanate. So we can think of this then as minus X. Now, if this was a different number, okay? If this was two moles of thiocyanate per one mole of iron, then you need to reflect that in these numbers, okay? But this we don't have to do, okay? So then when we're at equilibrium then, the concentration should be 0 0.001 minus x, 0 0.002 minus x, and then x. Okay, so now the question is, what is x? Okay, so x 
is related to the absorbance. Okay, so in this case, it's 0.213 absorbance. Now we don't know what that means, but we have to use Beer's law. So we know that absorbance equals, well, what we can do is we can put from our standard equation, we don't even have to pull out Beer's law, we can just use this. Okay, so we know the absorbance, which would be y, so we solve for x. Okay, so if um, we know that 0 0.213 equals um, 7124x plus 0 0.0024, then and x equals 2.96 times 10 to the minus fifth molar. Okay, so that is equal then to the iron thiocyanate concentration. Okay, so if we know x then, we can then put that into all of the other ones and get our answer. So we know that iron, okay, iron equals 0 0.001 minus x. Okay, so okay, so that's going to equal then um, 9.7 times 10 to the minus fourth molar. And the SCN, okay, we've got from that is also is 0 0.0002 minus x, so that's going to equal then um, uh, 1.7 times 10 to the minus fourth. Okay, so <clears throat> okay, so if we do um, if we do that, then so what we can get then is we now have iron, we have Fe3, and we have SCN. So we know the KEQ is going to equal FeCN. 2 plus divided by Fe3 plus SCN minus. Okay, so we should just been, then be able to set this up 2.96 times 10 to the minus fifth divided by 9.7 times 10 to the minus fourth times 1.7 times 10 to the minus fourth. Okay, so when we do that, then we get a number of 178. Okay, and remember, KEQ, the units are kind of weird, so we're just going to ignore them, okay? So, so that's how you would walk through the calculation then to get what we want. Now, what you would need to do then is to go back and for every one of them, okay, do this same ratio. Okay, now, if, if, we, if this was not a one-to-one -one reaction, right, if this was a two-to-one -one reaction, then again, you know, X is different, right? X is 2X or something like that. And the other is that the law of mass action will change as well. So there's going to be a part of it where we ask you to calculate which fits better, a one-to-one -one ratio or a one-to-two ratio. So you have to change things like the ice table here. So you may have to change this to 2x, uh, for instance, if, if you think there's too complex. And then you'll also then change um, your law of mass action. It might have a squared component in it. So anyway, so, so this is how you do it for one. You need to do it for all your points then and then take the average, figure out the standard deviation, figure out which one fits the best. So if you have any questions, please be sure to see, come and see me uh, sometime during the week.